It's mid-December in San Francisco. The holiday decorations and lights are out everywhere. Skaters zip around the ice rink set up in Union Square. And, as happens every year, thousands of scientists descend on the city, geophysicists specifically, for the big annual meeting of the American Geophysical Union, or AGU. I'm Steve Cole with NASA. Geophysicists study everything in the solar system, from the Earth to the other planets and the sun. I'll be introducing you to a few of the scientists here at the meeting who are involved with NASA research. My name is Galen McKinley. I'm a professor of atmospheric and oceanic sciences at the University of Wisconsin-Madison in Madison, Wisconsin. The poster I'm presenting today is focused on Lake Superior. We've been working for several years on building a computer model to simulate the carbon cycle of Lake Superior. That includes the physical circulation of the lake, the, the biology of the lake the, at the phytoplankton and zooplankton level. My research focuses on understanding how large aquatic bodies, that is the oceans and also the Great Lakes, take up carbon from the atmosphere. Carbon in the atmosphere is the major cause, uh, CO2 in particular, of global warming, warming the planet. And right now the oceans uh, as, as a whole take up about 25% of that uh, which humans put in the atmosphere. So we need to understand how the oceans take up that carbon, how that, that, that uptake changes with time and space in order to improve our predictions of the future state of the carbon cycle and therefore the future state of the climate system. So coming to AGU meetings is great because you get to see so many different kinds of science that are being done in areas that I know very little about. You get a chance to be exposed to those. There are about 19,000 registrants for this meeting, so to a large degree it's drinking from a fire hose. My NASA new investigator work is uh, similar to the poster I'm presenting today on Lake Superior, but there we're focused on the North Atlantic. So we're focused on understanding how um, uh, the uh, carbon sink in the North Atlantic and then eventually the globe, how it is responding over the last 30 years to changing atmospheric levels of carbon dioxide. So I think that our research uh, matters to everyone out there largely because we're trying to understand the global carbon cycle. And that's something that humans are changing a lot. Every time we burn fossil fuels, every time we make cement, every time we cut down a tree, we put more CO2 in the atmosphere. And that's driving a warming climate and a lot of changes around the world that have been observed, uh, for example, declining sea ice in the Arctic. So if we're going to understand all those processes, we need to understand the fundamental forcing of it. So understanding the global carbon cycle and the role of large bodies of water like the Great Lakes or the global oceans in that carbon cycle is really critical for, for predicting what the future climate is going to be like. I started out in uh, civil engineering as an undergraduate and um, got very interested in how we use computers to understand natural systems. And then when I worked for a while as an environmental engineer, I realized that the people with the PhDs in the lab really did the most of the thinking. And they had the most interesting jobs because they were able to really be thinking about um, a, a process and not just, for example, filling out the reports and doing sort of the grunt work. So that's what motivated me to, to go ahead and get a PhD. And now, uh, as, a, as a professor and um, and continuing on that track for, for more than a decade, um, I really uh, am so glad that I'm in this career because I can think every day. My, my work is to think, my work is to go into work and learn something, my work is to come to a meeting like this and talk to people and learn what they're doing. 